Hello, welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at two things cloning and Zim V values, which are for dynamic parameters. They were created in Zim version V, which stands for 5. Okay, here's the Zim site at zimjs.com. And if we scroll down to the gold bars here, ooh, we see tips. Tips is a place where we keep you up to date on anything that is new, anything that might uh, be tricky. So a couple of those things are in here. One is called dynamic. Uh, you might not know what that means. And well, dynamic means it um, <laughs> changes basically. Um, and the other one is clone right here, clone. So uh, let's take a look at the clone. It's suggesting that um, any display object can be copied with clone and that will make a new display object. It also says that bitmap assets must be cloned to get a second bitmap. So we're going to try that and, and then see images here. We've already talked about images. We may have even talked about cloning when we looked at images. If you want a copy of the image, you clone it. Well, that copy works with any display object. But there's a couple of things to look out for. And so let's uh, go through cloning and, and talk about those. Uh, the other thing that's it's not exactly related, but when you clone, if you're using these dynamic parameters, uh, cloning may act in a way that you don't expect. It may not make exactly the same thing, that you, <laughs> like a, an exact copy. So uh, here's an example of dynamic parameters. We're passing in an array of colors. And when we clone, there's an option on how we can either keep doing it dynamically or we can clone exactly the same thing. So that's why uh, these two things are slightly related here in the examples that we'll be looking at. All right, that's that. Uh, dynamic parameters uh, list a whole bunch of these ZIMV values and we're going to go through those and see how they can be used. Okay, so let's close that down and pop on into some code. Oh, <laughs> always do that, don't I? Uh, here's the Zim site. The Zim site here, where we get our template from, is the code page. So on the zimjazz.com, and then click code and hit copy. This copy is the template that we're coding in. Now I'll close my browsers. <laughs> So uh, this is roughly that same template, and we're bringing in Zim NFT. Um, inside here, let's try cloning something simple, like a new circle, dot center, and we'll make this one 100 comma red. So we have a red circle, we're centering it on the stage, like so. Let's have a look, we'll open in Browser Plus. I'm using Atom. I've installed the Browser Plus package so I can just open it right next to it here like that. Of course, we could open in a browser. And when I open in a browser like that, it popped up in my other screen. Uh, there it is. But um, what was I going to say about that? Uh, I had to <laughs> install a package called op uh, Browser Plus. Or no, uh, open in browser. So open a browser is a package. Browser Plus is a package that you would install through packages in Atom. Okay, um, right, so you see that we have a red circle. Ooh. And if we want to clone that, well, we'll need a reference to it. So const c is equal to, and then we can say c.clone, like that. Or if it were a label, we could clone the label. Or if it were a button, we could clone the button, etc. So there we are cloning, and once we do that, we now have a new thing that we could then dot pose at um, 100 comma 100. And when we refresh, you'll see that we have a clone of the circle at 100, 100. Great. And we can store that in another variable if we want, if we need it later. But it, it's C dot clone is a, a new circle. What's actually happening here is for something like a circle, it it just remakes the circle. It basically calls the circle with the same parameters that we passed in. Uh, so, well, maybe before we 
continue to talk about that. That was a simple clone. Let's just show you how to clone an asset as well, or the reason why we clone an asset, and then we'll move on to more information about cloning or things to watch out for. So here's the basics folder. I also have an assets folder. There's an asteroid. So let's bring in the asteroid. Um, the simplest way, I suppose, would be quote aster asteroid. Uh, dot png is it yeah dot png and it's in an assets folder in quotes so these next two parameters here after the this is the color of the stage this is the color outside the stage is what assets would you like to bring in it could be an array of assets square brackets but we're bringing in a single asset here and then the path we could just tack the path onto the front of that but then when we when we refer to the asset down here asset uh, like that, we would have to put the path here as well. Uh, because we've separated the path out, uh, we can just grab the asteroid PNG and paste it there. Um, I guess we'll dot center it. Can okay, comment these guys out. And now we have an asteroid. Remember, there's some things to watch out for images. If you were viewing this in a browser, open in browser. Uh-oh, there's no asteroid. Where'd it go? If we F12 uh, that to see our console, we got cores problem. So what happened is we tried to open up Chrome, not from our special way to open it, but just right, right from here. And uh, Chrome is giving us a security error. So what we need to do is on the desktop, just quickly on the desktop properties here, bing. There we go. I've said allow file access from files on my browser shortcut. That also means I need to open up the browser from the shortcut, which I didn't do before. There it is open from the shortcut. You just open up from the shortcut once. Now if I want, I can open in browser, bing, like that. And there's my asset with no error because we allowed local files on the canvas to be viewed. Okay, uh, that's all under the tips. So under Zim tips here, Zim, we scroll down to the tips, bing, under images. Okay, first thing is security error like that. Next thing is if you want more than one copy, clone. And that's what we're about to see. So let's uh, carry on with that. So there's our asset there. Um, if we do want more than one copy, say we want to, we wanted to say asset aster make another asteroid. Uh, we want two asteroids.png, and this one we're going to pose dot pose at 200 200. Well, let's go 100 100. So I want two asteroids. One I'm going to center, and one I'm going to position at 100 100. Hmm, where'd this one go? <laughs> That's because this is one of the asteroids, and then we just said that asteroid moved to position here. So it's the same asteroid, and we just centered it initially and then moved it to here, or positioned it here. So if we want a second one, we simply dot clone it like that. And now we've got two. We've got one here and one cloned positioned here. Okay, so that's a common um, glitch, uh, not a glitch, but a boo-boo, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as, as you're coding with Zim and you want copies of shapes, you forget to clone. And clone is handy for that. Yay! So we can clone any display object, including a bitmap. This is a result, of, this results in pointing to a bitmap that was loaded. Unfortunately, this is the same bitmap, which is fine. But if we clone it, it's not the same bitmap anymore. Yay. Okay, let's go back to the circle then. Comment that out. Let's go back to the circle and talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the gotchas with cloning. Sometimes people add things. We'll just refresh this here. Sometimes people add things to a circle. Um, for instance, a new label. And we'll say hi dot center on C. So what this will do, I won't bother cloning just yet, what this will do is it will add a label high in the center of the circle. Agreed? 
Okay, because the circle um, is actually a container. It's a container that holds a, a, a shape that is a circle. So there's a Zim shape that you can draw um, in, and that's what's in there. I'm not sure if I remember why we made that the case, um, but there were some things back in the dawn of Zim where we found that making the shapes a container were handy. But there's a few tricks about that. Um, one is the shapes have their mouse children turned off. And that's so that we can do something like dot drag. If we drag that like so, then I can drag it. And even if I press on something inside it, like that label there, it still treats the whole thing as one object. If the mouse children were turned off, C dot, uh, or turned back on, mouse children equals true. So now it would be like the circle has mouse children. And this thing gets left behind. Um, that's because normally when we drag, it drags whatever we press on. So if I press on that, it's dragging that. If I press on the shape, it's dragging the shape. Meanwhile, the actual circle container is left right there. So uh, if we do a timeout of one second, well, maybe make it two seconds, call this arrow function and we say c.outline, you'll see that the container, uh, stage.update, you'll see that the container gets left there. You ready? There's the container, even if we drag both of these things, this one and that one. The container is left there. So that's really dangerous. We didn't want that to happen. So that's why we we turn the mouse children false, because we don't want people dragging the shape. We don't want people dragging anything that's in there. So uh, here we go. Now it all goes. And when we um, do the outline, sure enough, the whole thing has moved with it. Anyway, that's subtle. You don't need to worry too much about it, although it could possibly be confusing for later. Um, or at some point in your, in your Zim career. Uh, but the issue that we have with, with adding something to the circle, uh, I wanted to show you something relating to clone. When we clone the circle now, it's not going to clone the, the high. Oh, the high did not get cloned with it. Because uh, a circle, when you clone it, it just remakes a circle. It doesn't know what's inside it. It doesn't expect anything to be inside it. There's not really supposed to be anything inside the circle. <laughs> yep, there is. So uh, that can you can run into problems there. For instance, if I were wanting to tile that, tile uses clone. And it start tiling it, but the first one might have the word high in it. And then all the other clones of that wouldn't have the word high in it. And you're going, well, what happened? <laughs> Well, so uh, there's a pretty simple answer. Uh, use a container. So we would do this. Const C is equal to a new container. And containers, uh, when we clone a container, hey, we know that the container is going to have a bunch of stuff in it. So the clone doesn't just make a new container. The clone actually cycles through all of the children of the container and clones those. Got it. So containers are meant to be cloned with stuff in them. Circles aren't expecting, they weren't expecting anything in them. It just remakes a circle. Same with a button. If it's a button and we're cloning it, it will just remake a button. It doesn't loop through the button and collect everything that's in there and it just remakes the button. Um, anyway, so that's, that's that. So C equals a new container. Then we would just take the circle and add it to the add it to C. We would put the drag on the container dot drag, although that's of interest. Anyway, we're not, we're not really talking about dragging now. Um, we take the new circle, we add it to C, we take the new label, we center it on C, and this is what we have. Oh, didn't quite work. Oh, because we didn't um, dot center the container. There's one thing anytime you're making a clone or something or um, adding stuff to a container, remember that 
you got to add the container to the stage, or if that, if indeed you want it on the stage. So there we go. We have the new container centered on the stage. We put the circle in there, add to C. We then center the label on it. That's what um, gets made. And then when we clone the container, it knows to clone both the, the circle that's in there and the high. Note that we did not center the label on this circle. We centered the label on the container. So <laughs> if, you, if, you put, if you put the label back in the circle, you know, something like const C, uh, well, whatever is equal to a new circle. I guess it can be C2. So this is a circle. If you put it in C2, you're going to run into the same problem that you had before <laughs> because you've just put the label inside the circle. So when it clones the container, it says, oh, I'm going to clone everything inside me. I'll clone the circle. But when it clones the circle, the label's inside there. It doesn't, it, remember, it's not, it doesn't clone stuff inside of a circle. So don't put it inside the circle. Put it inside the container. And then we're back to cloning properly. All right. Uh, hopefully I didn't speak too quickly there for you. You can slow down the video. Don't put some... Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, so that was one thing to watch out for when you clone, if you're cloning something inside of a shape. And that's not going to happen often, but we who work with Zim a lot will take advantages of the fact that shapes are, are um, containers, or the Zim shapes are containers, and sometimes sneak things in there. But we know that that might have certain uh, things that will happen. For instance, uh, you know, the dragging bit and here the cloning bit. All right, another uh, issue that comes up with cloning is if we're using these things called ZIMV values. So let's drop back. I'll just comment all that stuff out like so. Just go back to a simple circle. Um, const C is equal to a new circle. circle. And this time we'll make it uh, 100. Well, we'll go back to, well, do something different. Blue dot center. And yeah, let's see what we got there. So I have this new circle, purple. See it a little bit better. We have a new circle. And um, we can use these things called dynamic parameters, which are a way that we can pass in uh, options to pick from. And then when the object is made, the uh, a Zim will pick from, from those options. Now in this case, uh, we're going to do it with color, for instance, purple, green, uh, not with dots, but we're passing in an array, purple, green, uh, go pink. You can do it, or I guess blue. So now what happens is every time we run it, it's going to pick a different color, which isn't very magnificent in this case, because we could have just randomly run a random number and passed in that random number. But where this uh, becomes handy, I have a feeling I've shown you this already and is in basics, but where it comes handy is in things like if we pass this circle into a tile, then it would tile a bunch of random color circles. And that is really, really handy. It's very powerful and we've used it over and over again. It's called ZimV. It was made in ZimV. We call them PIC or dynamic parameters. It's so powerful that we made an own, like a, its own class for it and launched that on GitHub so you guys can use it in your code outside of Zim. It's a fantastic uh, sort of system that will randomly pick from these things. Like I said, it's not it's not terribly useful. Like it's handy. I mean, that's nice and easy to grab a random color, but we could have um, done that fairly easily by something like shuffling the array, shuffle, and oh, we've got zim shuffle. Uh, pick the array here and then get the first one, I think that'll work. And color, const color equals that, and then put the color in here. 
So that's relatively easy too. And it's going purple, purple, oh, there's pink. Just happened to do a whole bunch of purples to start. <laughs> anyway, or whatever. If you had just raw JavaScript to be a little bit harder, you'd have to pull a random number with math.random and, and get the uh, element, the array at that random number, etc. With Zim, we've got shuffle, and this allows us to do it a little bit easier. Anyway, as, as you can see, that's a touch longer to do that, but that's not really where the power comes in in Zim V, because that certainly could have been done. Where the power comes in is in something like an interval. Imagine an interval where every time you run the interval, you want it to run between one second and five seconds. That's impossible to do with an interval unless you uh, don't use an interval, you use a timeout, and in the timeout, you, you choose a different time randomly and call the same function that the timeout is in. And this is already this twisty extra stuff you have to do. With Zim and Zim V values, this is what that looks like, uh, interval. Let's run a min of one second to a max of three seconds and call this arrow function. So that's it. You pass in a Zim V value of a range and every time the interval runs, it will pick from this range. Isn't that amazing? And then you can drop flowers at different times. I think I have shown you this in the Zim basics, come to think of it, probably under interval. <laughs> but we, we didn't concentrate on Zim V values specifically, I don't think. Uh, for instance, when we did tile, I probably showed you Zim V values as we did the tile. When I did intervals, I probably showed you Zim V values when I did the interval and probably talked about them there as well. But this is a, uh, a basic specifically about them. Oh, yay. So uh, isn't that neat? Let's comment that out. Let's, uh, we've seen this happen, uh, but just before we leave the cloning, there's one more thing. What happens now if we clone this? Well, um, C dot clone. So we're going to clone that circle now and dot pose it at 100 comma 100. And here's what it looks like. Oh, well, so we had the circle. It chose purple, picked purple. But when we cloned it, it's blue. And we may want that. So let's refresh again. Sometimes these will be the same color, like that case. But it's basically, it's... Remember, when we clone, it will recreate the circle with whatever parameters we passed in. So it, it's basically just like taking a new circle and sticking it right there, uh, or I guess right here. Okay, except we don't have to put all that stuff because it's already been done, yay. So that's what clone is doing, and therefore, when it clones it, it's, again, picking randomly from that. And you may not want that, <laughs> so maybe we want to clone it exactly. Well, that's the next parameter here, the first parameter, true. Okay, so now when we refresh, it will always be the same color as um, the original. That was all tricky to do that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, if, if we were to tile this, so new C equals a new tile, that's a bad name for a tile, new circle, all that stuff. We're randomly picking circles in there and we should say, let's do 100 by, well, not that many. Uh, this is pretty big. We'll go uh, like five by five and center it. So we've just made a new tile. We're going to tile that circle five by five and center it. And let's do the clone. Oh, uh, it's gonna be a little bit awkward, isn't it? How about we make this a bit smaller? 30. Okay, and we refresh here. Uh, 10. Can we see those things still? Maybe 20, just so they don't overlap. There we go. So as you can see, this tile that we've made here first in the center, it's randomly picking all of those colors, and so is that tile right there. But watch this. If we go true there, that means make an exact copy of that tile, and Two purples, two blues, pink, two purples, two blues, pink, etc. Ending with uh, pink, blue, purple, blue, pink, blue, purple, blue, etc. So we got the same thing, exactly cloned. 
Neat. So that's the last bit about cloning that we wanted to take a look at. Um, the tile does clone things, and that can lead to a problem. I guess may as well make, talk about this a bit. If we were tiling, say, a dial and a slider and, uh, and uh, a button and another dial and a slider, and we put events on those before we tiled them, then cloning them would lose the events because cloning doesn't bring the events as well. Cloning just uh, clones the basic properties of the of the object, not any events that you've added to it afterwards. Oh, that reminds me, there is actually, um, yeah, that's an issue. If you, if you add your own properties to a circle, like you say, circle dot, Oh, this isn't quite as in basics, I don't think. But if you said uh, circle dot age equals 10 or something like that, when you clone it, you're not going to have age equals 10 it, because that's not an original property of it. But if you duplicate it, so we did make a duplicate and duplicate works like clone, except it also would then give you age equals 20. I can't remember if duplicate duplicates events, though. You'd have to look in the docs or try it. Yeah, but I'm not going to bother doing that right now. All right, but anyway, I was, as I was saying, if you're if you're making a tile and you have um, objects in there with events put on them, cloning them is going to make a new object and it's not going to have those events anymore. So in tile, there's a place where you can turn cloning off and you can say, don't clone these things. And then it will make sort of unique, it will it will leave the originals as, as it's making. Uh, so anyway, read about that in the docs in tile. That's sort of a bit advanced in there, and we're doing Zim Basics. For advanced things, by the way, in Zim, there's the Zim Explore series. It's not necessarily advanced, but it's where we just build and look at something in depth. They're usually hour-long sessions, uh, making something or talking about something. Alrighty. A little promo. <laughs> but we're in Zim Basics, and now we're doing for time. We've been at this one for about half an hour. We like to keep these basics somewhere in between half an hour and an hour. All right, so some more on these guys, the Zim V values. What else can we do with this? <clears throat> well, a, a tile is a good way to demonstrate the, the different Zim V values. I uh, won't bother cloning it now. We're sort of done with the cloning. Uh, we probably don't need a C there either. Yeah, we don't need that open. Okay. So that's randomly picking colors. I believe when uh, we did the tile with you, I probably brought you through a few of these as well. But let's go, go over them again. Maybe we don't need quite as many. Go five. No. 5 by 5, make this a bit bigger, 40, and how's that looking, uh, 50, maybe give it a bit of spacing, <laughs> 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, all right, so this is 5 by 5, ooh, and currently randomly picking from those. What happens if we instead do, there's a different type of Zim V value called a series. So if you pass in an array, it will pick randomly. If you pass in a series like that, or you could pass the array into the series, but usually we pass it once again. Um, this is our new circle here, and these guys mean rows or columns, rows, and spacings, H and V. <clears throat> so now we're doing a series of these colors, purple, pink, and blue. Purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue. So we're getting this diagonal effect on it uh, somewhat. If we made this six by six, can you imagine what this would do? Purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue, purple, pink, blue. So there you, there you go. So every time the tile goes to make a new item and clone it, it ends up pulling from this series. Another thing you can pass, so Zim V values. So in other words, 
we have uh, an array is random. We have a series is obviously in series in order. Oh, by the way, that series is kind of cool. A series does other things too, like dot, call that bounce, rewind. I can't remember. I think it's bounce. And what that will do is it goes purple, pink, blue, pink, purple, pink. Uh, what the heck did that do? <laughs> I don't know. What it's, maybe uh, let's pull that out there. Uh, const s for series is equal to there's a series of bouncing and we uh, call that s here let's see if that should go just backwards purple pink blue pink purple pink hmm what the heck is going on there is bounce even maybe it's let's have a look it's giving an error or what is bounce doing no no error let's have a look in the docs Docs, series. So you can look up series and see what you can do with it. Uh, Here it is. Reverse. Bounce. So bounce does something. Boolean defaults to true. Back and forth between zero and length minus one. Or pass in false to cancel bounds. Yeah, that's what I was thinking um, was going to happen, but it doesn't seem to be bouncing. Purple, pink, blue. Oh, it's going. Oh, yeah, it is bouncing. I just misread it. It's bouncing like this. Purple, pink, blue, pink, purple. But why pink then? Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. It's just it's very weird with three of them. <laughs> I can't, I can't so it goes purple, pink, blue. Then it goes backwards to pink. That's here, then backwards to purple, here, then forwards to pink, <laughs> pink, then through to blue, then backwards to yeah. So that is a bounce. I just, just misread it. I was thinking it would be purple, pink, blue, blue, pink, purple, and do that. Is there a way to do that? That's interesting. I might want that bounce. A Boolean defaults to true, back and forth, between zero and then, or cancel it. Reverse will reverse it. Jump jumps in index so we could go every two there's a bunch of them in there but the bounce that i was or the bounce that i was thinking where we do all three of them and then do all three of them in reverse actually don't see that we could maybe put that in as a request to call that something else like rewind maybe or something um so let's try in other words it, we didn't have to pull that outside i thought maybe it'd be some glitch about putting it inside of the tile but i don't think it is Oopsie daisy. I could just accidentally X. Put that in there. Take that back out. And instead of bounce, let's try um, every uh, two. Now what we have is purple, purple, pink, pink, blue, blue, etc. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with the series as well. Um Good. So we got a series. What I was also going to show you now is a range. Now the range doesn't really work with color, but the range will work with this 50. And remember where we looked at the range before? The min and the max. So you could do um, some random number. Oh, a range. Uh, between. Uh, it's not a random number. It's a min of 50 and a max of, uh, well, let's make the min a bit smaller. 20 and a max of 50. And now what it's going to do is randomly pick various sizes there. That doesn't have an align center, but we can slip in an align center style equals align center the align center. My E drops when I type. And there are the, ran so that's random sizes there um, with the line center. Otherwise, we'd have to go and find out wherever a line is in there, and it's a few parameters away, I think. All right, so that's a min and a max showing up in there. If we want to just rent, uh, oh, let's copy that. Copy, put it here. It's another type of Zim V value is a range. 
Uh, if we wanted just 20 or 50, we would go 20, comma 50. And now it's going to pick randomly from those two sizes. And if we wanted a series, then it would go 20, 50, 20, 50, 20, 50. Okay, do you see how powerful this is? And it doesn't only happen here, it happens in styles. We could um, do a series of alignments, series, um, center, left, right. I have no idea what that's <laughs> gonna look like. But anyway, what that would do, it would change our alignment, which maybe we can't tell. Center, then left, uh, left is the biggest, right is the small. Yeah, because all the sizes aren't random, let's see. We'd have to randomize this again, uh, which was the min max. Circle. Uh, that's it. And now we're, we've got certain alignments happening, which I can't calculate. But isn't that neat with styles handle these? Um, things like animating, if we were to animate the tile. Um, we could say the time. Uh, we'll do the time. What can we do? Scale. Ska. No, oh, scale. Uh, props. Sorry. Animate the props of scale to um, a min of uh, two and a max. Could do it. A max of five. So what that would do is it would animate, uh, oh, I only did it once, darn, I want to loop. It would animate to a random number between those two things. If we looped, we can actually um, turn something to do, let's have a look at the docs on that. I haven't seen that in a while, animate. Loop pick. So what we can do is set loop pick to true, because otherwise it will default to false, which means once it picks this, so if we looped here, comma, loop colon true, and let's center reg it just so it looks a little bit better for us. So otherwise the tile's gonna like, oh, that's loop, we should add a rewind. Rewind. Okay, is that better? So that's, every time we refresh, it's picked a different scale. That time it picked a bigger scale. This time it picked a smaller scale. But if we say loop pick true, what it's going to do is every time it loops, it will pick that again. So there it is, big, medium, I don't know, kind of all looks the same size, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's bigger. It all looks the same size. Maybe it's broken. Let's have a read. Loop pick, colon true. Let's see if we did anything wrong. L, uh, sequence object, drag, protect. Sorry about this. Loop count, loop. Perhaps loop pick default false. Make any ZMV value props for the next loop. G set. I can't quite tell if it's changing. To me, it doesn't look like it's changing, but sometimes it's hard to see. Oh, if we made a min of one and a max of nine, we should definitely see. That. That's huge. That's huge. I think it's going to the same place. It looks like there's a bug at the moment that's not picking from the scale of the props. I wonder if that's only picking from... No, it should do it from the props as well. Okay, we'll have to look into that. But that would have been the idea. In there, we can... I can't think! Help! How do I stop this thing? Stop! <laughs> there we go. It was hypnotizing me. Um, that should... Did I... Oh, I spelled pick wrong. I'm a dingbat. Okay. <laughs> Loop pick. I've been dealing with pictures so often. Uh, true. There we go. Okay, let's try that. 
you're probably looking at it going, pick, it's a K, it's got a K. I, I can just see, see you guys out there doing that. Uh, oops, I opened it in a browser, open a browser plus. Big, medium, yeah, okay, so now it's working smaller, small, medium, we'll call it big. Okay, so now it's picking um, randomly from these things as it goes through. Okay, so let's turn the animation off there <laughs> so we can think. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm glad we caught that. It wasn't a bug at all. It was just uh, bugging me. It was something was bugging me. <laughs> and we've got randoms there. I kind of like the series, didn't you? Um, back a little while ago, one of, the, one of them looked sort of nice, but there we are making art. So what have we seen? We've seen random, we've seen series, we've seen a min and a max, we saw it on animate, we've seen it in um, the interval. Another place where pick would show up is in a, an emitter, and we probably showed you that in the emitter as well. If we want to emit an object, it's a real pain. You know, like, hey, emit an object, and it's just going to emit that one object over and over. What if I want to emit a bunch of different objects? Well, if you pass an array of objects, it's going to pick randomly from that. And that is different. Do you see the difference? Um, uh, for instance, we can, we can take a look at it with the interval. You might think, well, why don't I just pull a random number and say rand. Here's the zim rand, 1, 3. Well, what that would do is it would pass in, say, 2.5. And then the interval would go 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2. That's not what we want. <laughs> See what I mean? So unless we have these things, these functions built to accept ZIMV values or, or something like that, we can't do this. It, it, it's just not possible. So we built in ZIMV into a lot of the functions that could use it, such as the emitter. The emitter, we know, and, and uh, style, and the emitter, style, timeouts, well, intervals, I guess, works better with, um, tiling, uh, etc. Animate. There's a whole bunch of places where this uh, is helpful and very powerful. So the last, the last one, is it the last one? Of course, if you pass just a normal value, then it, uh, like if I pass in 100, ZimV just ignores that. When it picks it, it looks at it and goes, oh, you're not as MV value, I'll just use 100. Um, the other thing is, maybe we don't want a circle every time. So let's copy this. Oh, uh, well, if we don't want a circle every time, then boop, 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 boop. We would just say new uh, rectangle. So this is nothing new. New rectangle, well, that'll make it black, so I better say something. 50 comma, 50 comma, <coughs> excuse me, like 100, 100. 100, 100, and red, <coughs> and a new circle. Mm, 50 comma, 50, and pink. So can you guess what that's gonna do? Since we passed in an array there, it will give us this. Hmm. It's funny. Oh. Nice. Hey, we could sell that as an NFT. I bet you people would buy it. <laughs> it's like, art! We made art! Hmm, nice. I don't know, pink and red, maybe. Hmm. So that just randomly picks from those two things, and that would be similar to an emitter. If we pass that into an emitter, the emitter would emit randomly from those. But what if we wanted something special, like say the circle with the word high in it? <clears throat> well, we can't exactly do that because it's gonna it's gonna clone them. So what we want to do is take where's our circle right here? Mouse children, new label. That's good enough. Okay, so there's our circle. And the last of the ZimV values that we're going to take a look at is a function. So function make circle or make whatever, um, greet, call it. 
squiggly brackets, and in there we'll do this stuff. Boop. C is the container. We won't bother centering it. Bop. We don't need that there because that was a nice circle red. Okay, add to C. New label, high, center on C, return C. There's the important thing right there. So we've got a function called <laughs> make greet, and we're gonna build that little high in a circle, and we return the circle. So the last of the ZimV values is a function that returns a display object, I guess. Okay, and we throw that function right in here. Make greet, like so. And this would work with an emitter as well. Here we're doing it with the tile. So every time the tile runs, it's going to make that. Actually, uh, I can't remember. I don't think it clones it, which means oh, that's pretty big. So let's put that into a 50. There we go. Neat, huh? So there are some V values. So it's basically picking the result, and the and it's also um, recursive. So anything can be sort of grouped in anything else as well. Uh, for instance, you could say the tile make greet, but randomize that along with a um, new button. That's going to look awful. So there's the new buttons. Here is our greet, and that's what we end up with. Uh, do you get it? <laughs> right? So if it happened to pick greet, make greet, then it's going to call the function. And this function could return C, but it could actually return an array of C or a new circle. And then, uh, well, that's... 20 and blue. Now we are getting um, some circles that are blue, uh, some buttons and some greets. Okay, so it'll figure and you, know, you can keep on nesting and calling one another and stuff like that. Wow. Wow. Oh, sorry. That's a big stretch. It's the morning. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing okay. Maybe it's the morning for you. Maybe it's uh, late at night. Who knows? I'm Dr. Abstract, and this has been a uh, Zim Basics on cloning and on the Zim V values. And by the way, in the docs, the Zim V values can be found under pick, like that, as a, a various places as well. So this will tell if something is a pick. So we hit go, and here is pick and choices. Along with a bit of history, introduced Zim V value. Oopsie daisy. Uh, there's the, the the GitHub on that. And then how you can do all of these things. Oh, if you want to not pick, then you can pass in a no pick object, which looks like this. Sometimes you want to pass in an array and it's picking from the array and you go, no, I really mean the array. And it's sort of the escape format of, of doing that. Okay, also in the docs, if you take a look at something like an emitter or a circle or whatever, so emitter, emit objects. So if we come on down here, right here, supports V, the parameters, supports V, parameters marked with Zim V means a, a Zim pick object or a pick literal can be passed. So here's a quick summary of those types. And look, the object is Zim V, not the width and the height. The interval, so how long does it take before some a particle gets emitted? Uh, actually, I've got to fix the docs there. That should be back in seconds now, so I'll go do that right now. There's a number, a life, et cetera, et cetera. So anything with Zim Vs, the angles, the force. Oops, missed force. Animate. All right, that's how we uh, show you Zim V. Okay, this has been Dr. Abstract with a, um, a Zim Basics. Come on into the tips and check out those tips and others as well. We did the tips on cloning right there and dynamic right there. 
Uh, also, you can find in the glossary of Zim things, V, uh, we talk about it here as well. Duo is, is another one. We did a, a basic on Duo, etc. So you can look at the glossary, some of the words that are sort of a bit more unique to Zim right in there. All the best. Have a great day or night. Come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. If you're still here, uh, that means you're interested in this. You should come and join us, zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. And don't be shy. Discord's made to chat and talk. Come on in and say hi. Talk, 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 talk. Um, it's, it's a lot of us talking. I mean, we do help a lot of people and enjoy doing it. So we'll hopefully see you there. Bye-bye.